It's now been 20 years since those three brothers named Hanson first bebop into the worldwide music scene with their mega hit, Mbop. Now those 90s it boys are all grown up with a new single that they say tells their kind of story. Here's my Nightline co-anchor, Dan Harris. A decade before the Jonas Brothers were burning up for fans, and a year before NSYNC hit it big with I Want You Back, there were these guys. Three long-haired brothers from Oklahoma with the chart-topping hit, Mba. There were 16-year-old Isaac Hansen on the guitar, 13-year-old Taylor Hansen on the keyboard, and 11-year-old Zach Hansen on the drum. Decades after Mbop and Where's the Love, Where's the love? It's not now Hansen, all grown up and with somewhat shorter hair, is celebrating 25 years of making music, kicking off a world tour this month, and yes, still performing that 1997 song that launched their careers. We sat down with the band at New York City's The Cutting Room. How tired are you of talking about Mbop, or is it like a, still a source of pleasure? You want to be known for what you're doing because you care about what you're doing. But what we're doing right now doesn't exist without what we did, right? When you can play a song, you know, and it still feels like it resonates, that's kind of a, that's kind of an accomplishment. And when you play it live now, is that hard on your voice? Because your, your voice was pretty high back then. We, we changed the key. <laughs> right. <laughs> the brothers started singing back in 1992 at the ages of 11, 9, and 6. Their love for music came out of listening to legends of the past. It was Chuck Berry, Aretha Franklin, Little Richard, Bobby Day. We auditioned for a local arts festival in Tulsa in our hometown. We got the booking to play, you know, a 15-minute set. Basically, every time we played a show from 1992 on, somehow or another, we would get another gig. But in our case, we were so young, you couldn't play bars, so we would just play wherever anybody would let us. Soon they'd find themselves playing at South by Southwest, a music and film festival in Austin, Texas, where they met a music attorney who would eventually become their manager, helping them launch their professional career. In the spring of 97, Hanson put out their first album, Middle of Nowhere. It sold 4 million copies in the U.S., arguably thanks to the success of Mbop which debuted at number 13 on the Billboard charts and soon made its way up to the number one spot. Umbop was number one in 27 countries at the same time. It means that essentially the whole developed world was listening to the same song at the same time and declaring it their favorite song at that moment. It's like, that just doesn't happen. And at least for us, it's like landing on the moon. But it did land them three Grammy nominations at the 1998 awards. Their good looks and charming demeanors made them teen heartthrobs. Their faces were plastered on magazine covers, and they landed a milk ad. What was it like when you actually broke, though? I just can't imagine what that's like to be in that white-hot glare at such a young age. It was just a bigger, louder version of what we were experiencing locally. You would get the predominantly female exuberance and screaming and so on, but it was just a lot more of it, and it was a lot louder. But it doesn't mean that it's not surreal. And to ever have a, a huge breakout, let alone on your first record, um, I mean, that rarely happens. The classic story is you get famous young, and it messes you up. So I think the classic story is that no matter what age you are, no matter how prepared you are, to have great success at anything um, is as hard to survive, probably harder than failing at something. You seem phenomenally well adjusted and not like people who just spent years in rehab. In other words, it seems like you, you'd make the most boring behind well, the music well, ever. You would make I a really think... good behind the music. The problem with behind the music shows was they weren't anything about music at all. No, and bad. that's actually what the Hanson story is, is the fact that we're not, uh, you know, we didn't have a crash and burn, that doesn't happen on accident. That, there had to be a lot of work to maintain mm -hmm. the course, to not end up with the, you know, and then, you know, the drug problem, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't get it, I won't wait. Following Middle of Nowhere, Hanson recorded another studio album. This time around was the beginning of a more mature sound that sought to appeal to listeners outside their primarily teenage and female audience. It was during the making of their 2004 album, Underneath, that they found themselves embroiled in a struggle with their label, Universal Island Def Jam, over their music. 
This led the brothers to start their own independent label, 3CG Records, which stands for Three Car Garage, a nod to one of their early demos. We had so many artist friends of ours kind of going, what are, what are you, you doing? doing? Like, yeah. this seems scary. Why would you do this? It's not, You're abandoning doesn't sound... the security blanket of there's a label with a bank account that knows how to market your record or something yeah. along those lines. For that matter, here comes Hanson, a very mainstream kind of perceived artist who then starts to talk about being independent in independent music. Now, I mean, <laughs> you're, thank God you're not an independent, you're not, you're not an independent indie rock band in the indie crowd, and you're not a, you're not a pop band playing the pop game. A big so, label. So who are you? Again, it was a little bit like when we... For the 14 years that followed, they continued to maintain a loyal fan base, despite being mostly out of the mainstream media. Hanson would release four albums independently, do a number of world tours, and start building their own family. But all this was not without difficulty. 25 years in, how do you guys get along? We do fight, but so, but, but, that, but that's but, exactly the point. Let me say yeah. this. So I was doing an interview the other day, and he said, you, you guys had real personal struggles. You talked about that you almost broke up. Like, how did you get through that? And the answer is, we didn't. We're still getting through it. Like, yeah. the answer is that we fight all the time. And we, we probably fight three times a day. Like, it, like breakfast, lunch, Look. brunch. That is just life because we care about what we do. Hanson now has a new single called I Was Born. The band gave Nightline a private performance. I think it's just a perfect kind of culmination of all this, this sort of blueprint of what is the Hanson model. And it's really do what you love and then do it a lot. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York. You can watch the full Hanson performance of I Was Born on our website, abcnews.com slash nightline. <laughs>